Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are doing a pretty intimate Q&A with just me because Yacht is low-key giving birth. Um, not right now, but like soon, so she's, you know, not, not down for it. And I have so many questions regarding like my IVF at the moment, my miscarriage I had, how I'm going emotionally, which you guys are so sweet for asking all the time. So I'm gonna just answer everything you guys wanna know. So one of the most commonly asked questions, um, which as I said before, is really nice of all of you just check in all the time and I've got so many questions of how are you going emotionally or how does IVF affect you mentally? Um, what do you do with your mental health when you're doing IVF? So, so many like mental state questions about IVF. Um, yeah, so I'm sure you're all aware, aware that I have I'm in round four of IVF, I just finished round four of IVF, so my fourth egg pickup, which is a full cycle. Um, I'm doing really well guys, so I pretty much just finished my, I just had surgery this week to get my eggs collected. Um, I'm not going to give details of how that went, but you know, I'm staying positive. I'm sure I, I will update you at a later stage how the results went from this round when I'm not so emotionally invested in it at this time. Um, so a full cycle of, I, did, I think I did 58 injections in 16 days. I don't know, I, I somehow keep it together, I don't actually know how. Um, I don't know if it's just like survival instinct and you just keep going or if I'm, I just push through the day for Zani or if like I try to stay strong for Giorgio, I don't know but work really helps me um, get through a whole round. I feel like if I didn't have work, I would just sit there thinking about it all day and that would be really bad. So having something to um, focus on and work for and work towards and being surrounded by my friends at work, it is really, really um, a vital part of getting through IVF. I also am really open with uh, about IVF. A lot of women struggle with that, I feel, because they're so secretive about it and they feel like, this is such like an embarrassing thing I have to do. Like, I don't understand that at all. I don't know why some women find it embarrassing or like, it's not embarrassing, it's, it's a part of life. And for me, talking about it helps me. So talking about it, um, working, exercising through where you can, these, all of these things help me get through IVF mentally and I'm doing really well. Obviously when you get hit with bad news, you have a really bad day or two that's normal and that you can't avoid that but other than that just getting through day by day try and do those sort of things to help you mentally so guys i have a lot of questions saying are you happy i why aren't you just happy with zani um why are you trying to do ivf you can just adopt like a little bit of insensitive questions actually but um yeah i just wanted to go over that i don't have anything against adopting. In Australia, it's actually really hard to adopt. You have to wait years and years. And I would love a sibling for Zani, like, soon. Like, and I would love for her to have her own blood sister or brother. And um, I'm not just gonna give up and just say, oh, I'm, I'm done with that and find another option. I just wanna really try my hardest to have um, a sibling for, for Zani. So I will try as hard as I can to have a baby um, using like mine and Georgia's genetics. But of course, if that is impossible and that might not be an option, I may consider um, looking down other avenues like egg donor, like adoption, maybe if you know I'm presented with that. But at the moment, I've still got the option to keep trying and I'm just gonna keep doing that while I can. So I have a lot of questions about my weight. I have mixed like, mixed feedback with my weight because a lot of people tell me like don't focus on it stop talking about it and then a lot of other people are like how do you deal with it? i think people who have gone through what i'm going through like really want to know how i deal with it because it's such a real problem for people on hormone treatment and i feel like when people just say don't stop talking about it don't be obsessed with your weight it's really hurtful because it's something that women go through and you can't control it and it's not that you're obsessed with weight it's just that you've given up your body and it has its consequences and sometimes it can get you down. So um, how am I going with that? I, I think I've put on about seven kilos now. I mean, my last update I'd put on five, I've put on another two. I find with each round I put on maybe two more. Um, and then with each transfer, like another one. The, the hormones I find really affect my body. 
Um, and yeah, so I'm trying not to let it get me down. I am still exercising through like the um, full cycle. When I get a transfer, I stop exercising altogether. So no exercising. I actually don't even lift Sani when I get a transfer. So for two weeks, I take two weeks, I take a week off work, but I take two weeks off lifting my child. Like my mum or mother-in-law has to like move in and help because I don't even lift her. It's, I'm like that careful. So yes. So I have a lot of people asking for tips for um, if they're starting their fertility journey or about to start. So my tips are to, you know, see two or three doctors, um, a fertility specialist and see who you feel more comfortable with in the beginning. Um, also ask for recommendations. I think my doctor was based off a re recommendation from my endo specialist. So they worked closely together and you know, I've, I've researched and I've heard really great things about my doctor. I see Dr. Scott Salisbury in Brisbane, which is a, lot of, a lot of people asked. So yeah, I think also watching vlogs on people who do IVF and just familiarizing yourself with it. So it's not so daunting when you start is another really great method to coping with it um, and talking about it with your friends. Don't be embarrassed. I find it so helpful to vent to my friends and get their support. Um, yeah. So house updates. So I have finished the design of my house. Um, I'm obsessed. Like I can't even, I just want to move in there already, but it takes, building a house takes a lot of time because you've, we've got to actually lodge it into council and wait for approvals and then demolish and all of this. So we're actually still in the council um, side of things. So we're just waiting for things to get approved, um, making changes to where it needs um, to comply with council, etc. So we're still in the very early stages, but when I'm sure you'll all see when the house starts, like you will see every single bit of the progress. It's just taking a little, while at the moment this stage always takes a really long time i have a lot of questions asking if i'm going to grease this year um the answer to that's no and that leads me into my next topic i want to talk about which is self-isolation with coronavirus um i i have chosen to, as of monday to self um isolate myself from everyone and my husband and my baby as well. It is a personal decision at the moment. I think that personally, I think the government should be locking everyone down so that this is contained and old people and sick people aren't affected as much as they're going to be. Um, yeah, I think if everyone just takes it upon themselves to distance like socially and stay at home as much as you can and don't go in public, etc., um, it will help everyone. So we're doing that as of Monday. We're doing that as of today. <laughs> we'll just be focusing on spending time together, working from home. I'm gonna do a massive wardrobe clean out. So look out on this week's wardrobe. It's a great time to reconnect and I'm, not, I'm trying to see all the positives in it. So it's not all bad. In terms of my workplace, so Savo Skirt will be also um, encouraging self quarantining at home. Um, yeah, so everyone who can work from home is encouraged to take their computers home and work from home. And um, if things get really bad, it'll be like strict, you can't come in. But at the moment, we're just it's just encouraged like if you can work from home. So I have lots of questions asking, was taking on the role of being a mum natural for me? So I, I'm not like a very maternal person, like at all, before I had Zani. Um, yeah pre-baby, I just, I don't know, I couldn't see myself being a mum. I know that sounds crazy, but I could, but it, it just like seemed very foreign to me. It didn't feel like something that would come naturally. But as soon as I had her, it's like all these instincts just like come into life and you're just like super mum. And I love her so much. And I want, I, could, I wish I could have 500 babies. Like I actually wish I could have more. I love being a mum. So it didn't, like it came naturally when it happened, but thinking about becoming a mum, I found that like it was just like a really strange and foreign like feeling. I don't know, I can't explain it, but I 
feel like when I had her, it all came naturally. What is that? <laughs> what? I just murdered someone. A lot of people want to know details on my sex life, apparently. How does IVF um, affect your sex life and your marriage? So IVF um, does, of course, affect your sex life and your marriage, both. Firstly, emotionally and secondly, physically. So the emotional part of it is that you just like, your hormones are all crazy, you're a bit crazy, you fight a little bit more, but usually the, the partner slash Giorgio comes to the party and is a little bit more understanding. Um, and yeah, you work through it. Um, and with IVF, you're actually not allowed to have sex after transfer. Like they tell you no sex. And actually when I had Zani, I wasn't allowed to have sex till I was 16 weeks pregnant. And then when I was 16 weeks pregnant, I just didn't feel like having sex. I was like, mm, it's a no for me. So yeah, <laughs> I went a long time, poor Giorgio. But that, those things happen. And sometimes it's for the better, like the safety of your baby or it increases your chances of um, the embryo sticking. So yeah, um, it definitely has a massive effect on that and also when I'm injecting I get really swollen and sore and I just don't want anything like entering me at that point <laughs> like the scans I go for are really painful so I just can't even imagine that like sex would be the same so I just avoid it altogether does Yacht know the gender of her baby yes she's having a boy oh I just can't like by the time this video comes out she would have had it and I can't even meet it. Did you know that? I can't meet my nephew because of the coronavirus. I can't go to the, the hospitals and stroll on in. I'm just gonna have to FaceTime him for like a week. It's gonna be so weird that I can't see Yacht or the baby or my brother for a week. So I'm just... Since Yacht can't be here, she had so many questions as well. She can answer them all like in, a, in detail um, in her own Q&A, but I just wanna let you guys know she's doing really really well she um she's in her last couple of hours of being pregnant actually so yeah she is having the baby soon and she's really excited i think she feels a little bit like strange that all of this coronavirus is happening around the time she's giving birth like she's not worried with the safety of her baby or anything because she's got very strict rules like no one can see the baby and like in a week's time when she goes home no one can touch the baby etc so she just feels like I think she feels a bit strange that she's bringing a baby into the world at this time. I don't know, and it's such strict regulations around the hospitals. She just said she feels a bit strange, and like I think anyone would. But yeah, it's her second baby, so I'm sure she'll know exactly what to do. And Con is really excited. He keeps saying the baby's name. I'm not saying. Actually, I helped pick the baby's name, so I'm taking credit. And lastly, guys, I just want to touch on the miscarriage I had. So last month I had my transfer. I had a frozen embryo transfer and it worked. I fell pregnant. Um, I was so stoked and I was just, you know, you can imagine how happy I was. I got my blood test. I did my pee test the night before my blood test because I could not wait. That's the first time I've done it and I could not wait. It said pregnant. I was like, I knew it! And then the next day I went in and I got my blood test and I called them and I was like, what's the results? Even though in my head I was like, I already know. But they like, they were like, oh, you're pregnant, congratulations. Your HCG is just a little bit low, but hopefully like in the next blood test in two days, it doubles, like, yay. So they weren't doom and gloom or anything. And I was like, okay, cool, I was hopeful. And then on the Friday, two days later, um, I went in for another blood test and got my bloods done and then I got the results and they were like, we're so sorry, um, your HCG is halved, so you're likely to miscarry or you've miscarried or you're likely, you're just about to. Oh, I just thought, oh, <laughs> like I was, actually I was angry. I was really angry. I was like sad of course, but I was just so angry. I was like, why, for what reason did, did did I have to get a, a yes and then a no? Like, why couldn't it have just been a straight no? You know, like, if it wasn't gonna work, why put me through, like, my emotions? You, as you can imagine, 
we hit the roof we were just like oh my god it's ha it's happening finally and then it just like what is the point i just was really angry with the world a little bit so um i let myself be angry and you know when people ask me how you're going i'd be like i'm pissed like i cannot believe that happened like i was pregnant and then i miscarried so like that's just shit. but i just like got on with it and I know I knew I had to do a whole new round of IVF, which made me even more angry because I had to go $15,000 again, surgery again. This time my dosage on my needles was, um, I had double dosage of a blocker. So I had double the amount of needles. I was just so pissed off, <laughs> so angry. But um, I don't know, I just used that anger to like push me and I, I was just like, let's do it. Let's get this next next round done. And it worked, like I I got through it and, um, and I'm fine. Um, yeah, so a miscarriage is really, is such a tough time and people deal with it in their own way. Um, and obviously at different points, I would have been just four, four weeks pregnant. That's like hardly even pregnant yet. And I don't know, like, later on like i've had friends and and family who have had miscarriages late in their pregnancy later on in their pregnancy and i can't even imagine how you deal with that but i think it's just human survival and you just do whatever you can to move on and yeah i think it's okay to grieve the loss um and it's it's not even the loss of the baby it's sort of like you you start planning or you, you see things in your head and you start planning and you're like oh okay well i'm gonna be due at this date and i'm gonna have a baby um in this weather and my baby's gonna be this far apart from my other you start planning your whole life and i think when you lose the baby like you grieve all of that not just like i'm not pregnant you grieve everything that could have been and it's really sad but these things happen i think it's one in three people miscarry at some point it's so it's so common um and yeah like a lot of women have or will experience it so yeah should be talked about more that's something else that people shouldn't be embarrassed about like you should get support from your friends and family and not hide it like i couldn't imagine hiding all of that and going through it alone with my partner like we would go crazy so and that's about all that's happening in my life at the moment so probably check back with another q a in a couple of months but for now that's all i've got for you <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed my update and if you have any other questions you can dm me or just write a comment below and we'll try to get back to you so yeah honestly <laughs> i had to do it i had to i had to kill him what have you done <laughs>